I made the hardest base in Meet Your Maker, and I'll be reviewing the creation of this daily outpost in all its glory. I'm gonna cry. <gasps> I'm Lordy, and as a master player, I'll provide my advanced building tips in this guide so you're able to make your own best bases for your friends and others to raid. Meet Your Maker is available on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Make sure to visit the link in the description below to find out more about Meet Your Maker. And thanks to the sponsor of this video, Behavior Interactive, the developers of Meet Your Maker. So we jump back onto Meet Your Maker, and right now you can see that our command center is going crazy. So let's go to our build section and double check your base and we've got 61 kills so we can double check the replays as well in this section here to see what happened in the gameplay and the first thing he realizes is the flame trap i got him killed there goes up pushes in realize now he can't push back because the flame's active dies to both flame traps so if you try a speed run you'll die in that combination there especially if your arc barrier is used on the first instance i think he does i think he dies to the warmonger from bloodlust is it is it the case it is perfect keeps pushing forward sees the structure does he realize that the warmonger is never actually going to rush him the one from behind just misses the attack so maybe he's tripping out for where that came from he is there we go so that works out in some essence yeah he's waiting for the warmonger to push him does he ever realize that it actually pushes or not oh my god this is gonna work out really well he dies here from the ricochet oh my god i think he does where's the second shot yeah i think he died in that one instance and then he just quit the game destroys that did he die? Oh, he died. That's the reason why. So he dies to the trap and he's like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Play solo or with a friend as you mastermind devious outposts full of traps and guards, then gear up from methodical, fast-paced combat, raiding other players' creations. Meet Your Maker has been designed for the long term, delivering content to expand your experience and arsenal year-round. Help me! First pick up Jim Matt realizes the Warmonger is over there as well. The Warmonger gets him killed. Are you serious? There's no way that just happened. After all that time, he dies to the Warmonger. Doesn't realize he didn't actually destroy the right thing and dies to the flame trap. That's the interesting one. And then dies to flames. He looks behind just to double check if he doesn't get killed. Gets killed by the range shot. Play safe again as he's timing it. Doesn't realize he's going to get killed from behind. There we go. Perfect Warmonger play. And now more open space here. Does he get caught? Seems like he will. The flame trap in that little nook. That's the goal. I wanted people to play in those nooks and die because of it. The goal was for a player to go down and kill themselves, essentially, by getting that loot. He goes down there, realizes he can't get out in time, and dies to the self-destruct. Oh my god, that is super unfortunate for him. Oh no. That looks so good in slow motion too. <laughs> so I'm guessing at this moment, after dying at that very ending location, essentially, this player gets tilted. Because he gets five to deaths right after it. So he dies to the flame trap by trying to speed run. He's gonna die to the flame again. He dies to the flame again. He has Phoenix Spot to respawn. As you can see, there we go. Perfect kill. Dies again to the flame trap. He's gonna die to the same gimmick. Perfect. Another kill in our favor. But guess what, mates? If you want to give my base a go before watching the rest of this video, you can search up Lewis Port, the name of the base on the top right corner, in your social raids, and you'll be able to find it. Person. And I can't wait to go through your replays to see how you achieved it. Oh my god, look at that cutscene. Perfection. Oh, a spike track gets him. Oh, no, buddy. He's playing melee and arc barrier. Oh, the burning piston got him. Oh, that's perfect. The grenade trap killed him. Oh, that shot ricochets in here and he dies. Oh, he dies to the flame still. He traded with the flame trap. And this player took two hours to complete this mission. Two whole hours. He was dedicated. That is insane. And in the aftermath of all those kills, we can see all the floating skulls, highlighting the locations of all our loot that will be there for us to collect as a builder in Meet Your Maker. And we can learn what points worked really well for us in succession. As you see, people even go for the Warmonger outside, end up getting killed for it. People that were going through here in this choke point, it makes the Raiders feel pressured. Try to continue. They have a series of deaths to be ready for because you need to be very smart before pushing this. And as many players have raided this, They've all failed at this point, as you can see. So that's a lot of flowing scales there, highlighting all the kills that we've gotten in our base that we've made recently. I'm glad to see that. More points to collect. There's also Master Plays in here, if you saw. It came for a split second. There's even Master Plays here as well. Crazy stuff. Let me get all this loot. We have our grenade trap there. We'll set plays to push down. A surge function being self-destruct in our actual impaler. Then pushing up with pistons holding plays off and being concealing this trap here, which has Dragon Breath, which will reach that very bottom of that point there to kill raiders. As that happens, they'll push up and get into the next zone and look up and then see this abomination of layout, which pulls you up into a point 
which has a catch and release that makes you fall into that flame trap, which burns you. A flame guard that has a new technique, which we'll talk about within our process of our video. And pretty much Snaggers plays like crazy. We have a range a guard up here, followed up by flame trap pointing downwards to conceal this warrior here, which will be able to push through. And with this fact here, being flame walker, he's able to surpass the flames and not die, which is a very important part about this base. A new gimmick, and I wanted to test it out to his full potential, and that's what we did. We have a spy trap over here as well, followed up by a little cannon back, another spy trap there. And a crazy gimmick, which will catch players off guard. If they're trying to zipline from this location, go to there, they'll be on unease because they'll hear something else to activate, but have no clue where it's from. They'll look down to kill the spike, jump backwards most likely, or stay on the same platform. And by doing so, that will pull you into a higher location where you sit on top of this acid trap and you're pretty much stuck here. And if you try to jump out, that spike trap is already activated since you went past it initially to get pulled towards there and you'll get killed by a spike. Perfect combination there. Followed by that, we have another series of stroke points. Highlighting the point of interjection for the Raiders to have to make a choice here. Do they fully engage or retreat? Usually retreat will be the best option, as you can see from these traps here, pointing to the direction of this platform, which will kill the Raiders if you get too close to this area. The idea is to make the Raiders feel like they have points to breathe, which is usually behind them, not forward. Forward is where you pretty much die, unless you really think about the playstyle of the builder, which is being me. And that's gonna be very hard. I'm a master player, I'll take every move I have into account to make sure we make this base crazy. And the best part about this base, after watching all those kill cams, we have to most likely fix certain parts of the base to make it even more perfected, to make it the most deadly base out there. There are long range trap here, followed by grenades, uh, concealment here, which will force players to go towards this side and get killed by spikes. If not, they'll try to push up and look at the right side and see this gooey thing, and hopefully get pulled by this, which will activate the grenade trap, this spy trap, and the bolts over there, and get some kills, as you can see. Worked it pretty well. And this little nook here, which is kind of crazy, which is forcing players to go out, see what's occurring on, and when they try to get back in, they actually go into this nook and die. So that's great. So their safety becomes my ease of access of kills. And then from there, we have different locations where you can see all the other skulls, getting kills, cannonbacks, range, second guard wave plays, just an open room for death. And it usually makes players want to go a certain way and double check, like they'll come out. And the first thing they'll do is want to check this side, realize dead end. Go here, dead end. Go over here, dead end, bolt trap. Then go over here and try to figure out what to do. This will kill them. If not, these will hopefully ricochet the shots in here. The usual will be able to ricochet here really, really well. And a player will try a speed run, Pass this, the hit into this plate, go down. If not, get pulled by this, then go down. If you go here, get pulled up here and die. So there's a lot of potential, and I do like the way it works. And the idea is for the Raiders to feel like they're in an open space where they can do whatever they want, but realize as they move into certain directions, different angles of traps will activate and kill them. And they go down here, another trap will activate. They don't land the range shot enough. In that bit of time, they end up dying. Other trap modifiers, flame, this craze trap there, followed by this mechanic here. Which we'll talk about later on second wave. They go up, they see this cannonback. Cannonback will try to shoot down this area here, and there's downside to kill them. If they try to push up and they don't jump proper spot, and if they do, there's a spike trap there which kill them. If not, they'll get killed by this flame. So it's perfect combination of traps all put together, and then going through this whole place, and then we have this little cheeky area. Then our bolt at the gem mass where you can see the red stuff. People go excited for it, and then out of nowhere, dead. And then this guy's just went here. This friendly warmonger. And from our other spot down here, where our skull tomb is, you jump down to get loot. And I get loot too, by killing you the spike trap. And the way out, certain traps will activate. That's usually here with the grenade trap, followed up by a surge trap here, alongside a flame trap again, and warmong, because they'll spawn out here. And a far distance trap being that bolt trap there. And also this trap above here, alongside our guard, which will come out from the hull cube and kill. So there's a lot of mechanics to play. Really, really fun. The design of the base is not supposed to be cohesive in any aspect. The goal is for it to keep changing and morphing into different designs as you encounter it and try to figure out the system. And when you figure out one side, then you realize there's another system in place or another trap uh, playstyle in place and you end up dying to that. And that's how I get all my kills to give me free currency to keep on building. And now you'll be able to see the process of me building my base from scratch and how we got to that point. So the first thing you want to do is pick a barrow site that has a high capacity. And you want to go into your build menu. And then from there, go to strip outposts. And that will get rid of everything that's on the map currently. And you start fresh and start brand new. Now you have to try to figure out a way for Harvey, this little bug over here, to get to that location. And that Jamad is quite high up. And we have tombs on the way as well. So we're going to try and cooperate that in some aspect. But you can make multiple pathways for the Raiders to actually go through in order to get that gem mat and the tombs on the way. So you can make a choice of how you want this. You can start with something low and just go down here and then try and ramp up towards that location. And also in the top right corner, it does represent that tick of the harvested path being active and being valid. So that's one way of doing this. But there's other ways of building this. Obviously, you can go from 
a sort of angle like this. Let's just go towards this area here, make it more of a 2D playing field from the side or side elevation. Maybe you could try and create something down here and then loop the Raiders into a type of structure, maybe a tower, going up to this very top of the gen mat in order to receive it. And you can fill this place with traps, guns on the way. It could be kind of crazy compared to just having a basic straight line into this area. And what I usually do is try and build in reverse because the gen mat, once the Raider has picked it up, there's a three second delay. It does take up a lot of your capacity if you put a lot of traps there and a Raider just walks out of them before they even activate to create choke points against the Raiders so they don't have a chance of running through it with ease. So I want this to be a tight corridor and then from there going towards a downward slope and they can detonate as a Raider is trying to go in or out and that can cause a situation when they have to try and run away from these grenades and they just can't do it. So we're going to go from here as we incorporate that then most likely ramp back up again. But I do want to incorporate a couple of things. Hopefully create a path here that leads towards our tombs. I think that's good so it rewards a player for doing so but it also gives us time for our other traps that may be close by to the Jamat to actually activate since they're going full these benefits over here instead. And with building, it's more of a like methodical thinking game of how the Raiders would react in certain situations. Right now, I think a Raider gets to this point and they collect the gem mat. The first thing they're gonna do is see this other pathway, think it's a shortcut and try to go for it. But we'll indicate through a actual spray in the game, which usually initiates the idea of finding loot, this pathway here with this spray, all Raiders to actually go for and get some loot. I could trap this up if I want to, to be a little bit sneaky and hopefully get some kills out of it to make them reset completely. But right now, I'm trying to understand the pathway that I want to build here. And I've obviously built some crazy looking structure already. So I'm going to try to make it work. I do want a ranged trap. So we're going to try to put a bolt over here. Because I want to start incorporating the little traps here and there so we can understand how it all comes together. So let's put a bolt trap there. And then from there, put overshot, which will increase the range of this ability as you see through this range indicator, be able to reach this corridor. And now he makes me think, do I want this to reach this point of the corridor? Or do I want to extend even further? So when the Raider actually does turn, it activates automatically as they're looking at the loot of the gen mat, which I think that might be more optimal. So I'm going to delete this section here, push it in further. And now we have this connect here, when a trap will activate as the Raider does step into this section. So that's good to know. And that range game is going to be very important for these type of bases. Because right now, kill boxes don't really work and building kill boxes are kind of boring. Especially when the exploit was accessible. Now it isn't. So it's still possible and it's not as effective in any aspect. It's no longer meta. And building a base that is actually well thought and uses a lot of range is very important actually. But here though, this is very interesting. So I do want to put a grenade trap here. So I'm going to notate it. Just by placing one right now. The detonator traps. And leave it there. Because the idea would be, as a raider is going down this slope, it activates, or if they're going up the slope and it activates and they try to run down, they usually die. And we'll do the same thing here, mirror on both sides. So if they try to run, it will cause a situation when they have to get hit by one of them, depending on what they're doing. So we'll put that second wave modifier so when they come back from gym mat, they think it's all clear, but actually it isn't. It's a booby trap. I actually want to incorporate a couple of the new elements as well. So we're going to go through a couple of things. There is flame guards too. So I'm quite excited to incorporate that today and highlight how beneficial it could be in certain situations. I think I can make it a shorter there and potentially connecting to another system and create a large room here. I want it to be more of a guard room that creates different breathing points for the Raiders. So they'll be under pressure continuously and other times they won't be. I'm going to try and incorporate the first slope that we had with the elevation into this harvest allocation. First, we have the entrance point, which will use the same basic foundation that I had initially, wrapping up, which we can possibly have some traps here as well. So players have to push in or if they go down, they get caught. I might even wrap this up again if I do because I think it's kind of smart to ramp multiple times here, but we'll find out. And then we've got a box here, which will have some guards, hopefully, close by. I think ramping down is always harder to get out of initially. It's always changing your ideas as you're going through, because now I'm trying to incorporate traps, and I want to find a way to do it that works best for myself. And we could even incorporate the basic uh, foundation on the side as well into accordance to save our capacity, which is not a bad play here. It's kind of interesting because it'll create these little choke points throughout the actual map, and that's what you want. You never want a straight pathway. You want a series of choke points with different types of traps, combinations of traps that work in your favor to catch a raider off guard. Because if your base is cohesively designed and ends up having the same gimmick throughout the whole base, what ends up happening is a raider will find out what the gimmick is and then play completely slow or change the build into the meta items, whatever they may be, to stop whatever they're encountering. So we're going from ramp down to up, then a turn. And we could have possibly have some traps here as well. Then extension of here of this turn, then another series of choke points, which I'm going to block over here, which we could even wrap again, which could work out really well here, actually. And the reason why I block off stuff initially is first to get an understanding of how this tight corridor-like structure can be. And then from there, I would expand on it, cut out the segments, and build up even further and further. First, I just want to get more of an advanced layout from that basic form that we initially started from, and then make my critical decisions of what traps and guards I want present in certain situations. And I actually like the high ceilings as well. It's quite deceiving. 
especially on the way out with second wave and could catch plays out quite drastically. Maybe close this whole space in completely and then we'll try to go through a rated perspective and understand how it actually looks from their side. Because it's actually quite important to see that at the same time. You'll be taking information from raiders as much as possible in order to understand what the hell is your base actually doing. Is it achieving what you want? Is it working as well as you think it may work? This could be an interesting nook, so I'm gonna leave it like that actually. Actually quite nice. I think I can use this nook as well to my advantage. Because the player won't be able to surpass that trap there. When they pick this up, we could have another trap activate on this side which might push them into here. But sometimes you end up working with some freeform as you go throughout it. And it's not always gonna be the same base being created all the time, depending on the elevation of the gym mat and how you get to that gym mat. Things just change and you wanna work with what you got instead of trying to make it everything so precise. Press T for test from start and then you get to this point here, go into the Raider form. So what we try to do here is first engage this point here, which is the starting point. You will see how we go down there no matter what, since he will always show you the way. Then from there, there'll be some type of traps here within this setup, which may activate. So we'll try to create some structures here. So when a raider goes past, it activates and they have to retreat. And if they retreat, it may bounce off these areas here of the ramp and the walls and hopefully detonate on them and kill them with a grenade trap. If not, they will continue through here. We'll close this off in a second. And there may be some other traps here with playing range game. So a player has to shoot and peek across. If not, they will get hit by the bolts or potentially any other trap I want to put there. And then we have this high ceiling here, which I want to use to my benefit. Another downward slope, which you can use for potential traps. This open area, which will be more blocked off, but will be more of an open box, which will allow us to actually create these opportunities for guards to be more present in this point. And then the player will take the right pathway, go towards this section here, and cause them to go into another slope, sloping function, and be caught by another trap, which would be over here, with second wave or first wave, and go around this choke point, another series of choke points, see this gym mat, then has to block this just in case. If not, they will get killed, and that trap activated from this location, which is quite good. Then you see the indicator here, get some more benefits on the way. Okay, the goodies, collect it, and be able to escape. Hopefully, ever so free, but on the way back, I'll create some other series of trunk points to hopefully help out. And the best part about this, this is still classified in my aspect of understanding, more of like intermediate at this point, because it's a basic foundation. But see how those traps work? Pretty well. Imagine another trap activating from this slope here. A downward slope, actually from there, so we can put another ramp here, which is like maybe a potential flame trap on second wave that points towards that direction. So once you're looking up here to stop the protection of this, your barrier will run out as you get hit by that trap, unless you time it so perfectly. So now what we're gonna try and do is go back into build mode and hopefully change what we just mentioned into a favor. Even going through the raiding experience yourself on your own base is very important. Now we can put a flame trap here and it should still be activatable. And we can extend the range of that flame trap with Dragon Breath which hopefully will reach a good distance. It's not what we want exactly, but it could still work. I could try and drag it down even further. I might have to do that. But don't be afraid to start again and actually progress within your base because you'll start with something that you may like and then you need to change it in order to reach the new functionality. Now we've got the bit of a twist turn here as we wanted. That will get blocked off here a bit, which is not too bad, but that distance should now reach the lower section. Great. It's no longer stopping here. It's stopping down here, which I wanted to. We still have this trap here activatable, which will bounce into this section as well, which means they'll get sandwiched by two traps. Let's place down the hollow cube over here. We will put second wave on it. And you put second wave on this, because I want to use that as a return. And place maybe around three guards. One of the guards will be based on just armor and possibly increasing the movement speed, because I wanted to dash in as quickly as possible. The other two guards will have flame walker and also armor plating. So they're tankier. And they also walk through flames. Well, this one up here is going to sprint through, hopefully, and get to the other side once it's second wave. So I'll try to create a pathing for this. So let's go over here, create a pathing, run towards the gym mat with this character. So at any point, it will activate after second wave is active. There you go. I'm going to stand guard over there. I'm going to put a ceiling trap over here as well, which I like this combination of having a trap going down of a spike trap. And you could even make this a surge spike trap, but I think that will kill my other guards if it does activate from a presence of an enemy. So what I'm gonna try to do instead is leave it as second wave and maybe keep nothing on it. Like no extra benefits of any sort. So that's good. And then we have this from second wave as well. That's a combination there. So we can use this as a second wave return aspect. What I wanna try and encounter is hopefully something that 
places pressure on the player to keep moving forward. So you could potentially have guards come from the side as well. That's also an option. I'm going to place them over here. So from here, control the pathing. We could do that with our guards over here, our warmongers. Maybe that's a priority. Then we use bloodlust instead. So we, right now, we're going to leave it as this. Would it be enough pressure for us to actually stop pushing through the base and get caught by a warmonger, which means it's an easy kill for the builder and they get their own currency from that kill? Or does there need to be other systems in place with bloodlust being activatable and placing that pressure instead? after a enemy has been killed here, aka one of our minions. And these will be entry traps, so we'll put a surge here with a rain trap. Then from here, I'm gonna place another and point it down towards this. So once they clear this or zip line towards it to clear or a melee weapon of any sort, they get hit by that. I think that'd be cool if we can actually get a grab from that distance. Oh, that'd be so awesome. It's such a weird grab that it may not actually hook onto the player, especially if they're going around corners real quickly. On the way there, hopefully they get caught by it and actually end up dying to that trap. Is place an acid trap here. Get a player to get caught through this trap into the acid. That would be kind of cool too. I actually like that quite a bit. Would Harden get them keep them in place? We're gonna try this too. So these are all like new mechanics that you wanna to try to utilize together in conjunction in order to get certain outputs. It may not work, but testing it is very important. Because I know series of combinations, but I'm gonna try and create stuff that a little bit more off meta or not usually the norm with Emit Your Maker. Because I feel like that would be quite fun to see. That missed, but if I shot that, now that's Surge, so I'm pushing up. Surge again, pushing up. Ball trap, deflect perfectly, nice. Let's go through here. Traps activate, destroy that. Get pulled, oh crap. And now if I let go here. Okay, so it doesn't hurt you in that state, but if you fall onto it, it does. It'd be kind of cool. And guess what, there is a mechanic, that's a warmongers. There's a mechanic like that. So let's try and build something here, which potentially could help us drastically. So let's go over here, and we're gonna change this into the catch and release. There we go, perfect. Which means that it will catch a player and release them into this pit. Which means we get freebies, and I like that. So we're gonna try and give that a go. I get pulled, pulls me up to that section. I drop and die. Oh, that could be good. That could be very good. That could be very good. And if I somehow survive this, the bolts there get me. I actually like that quite a bit because Han and skin is very underutilized and using it the way I'm using it would be very interesting. The warmongers are behind. Watch out from that. It bounced off his head. That's insane. I'm getting quite excited with the output of this base already, just by little fundamental changes that can be so drastic. If it gets a play caught, it pretty much leads to crazy kills. And I'm gonna put self-destruct here. So if they somehow hit this, and they don't get hit by this and die in there, this is not a safe point. They have to jump down, put a detonator trap there, and hopefully close it off like this. So the player will rush through. This will start to actually activate and hopefully drop some of the bombs on these enemies and kill them. Initially, this will be a test. If the players know how to verse this, they may survive this little uh, chain of commands over here. But they go through here and they protect themselves and this activates and self-destruct activates from this exploding at the same time. Means they could die. Maybe not even uh, focus on the back wall, maybe here. And do the same thing we did with our prize staircase on second wave, but instead of being second wave, it's first wave. So now we've got a weird couple mechanics working together in conjunction. I wanna put a piston here, because now we can use that to obscure the aspect of a flame trap over there when the pistons are out. And that flame trap will still activate once we get to a certain point. And this won't be able to get destroyed unless someone shoots it. Like one will activate, not both at the same time. And if it does activate both at the same time, they don't destroy each other. Get down here, block this. This is optimal. And that was 100% optimal block. Push up a bit more, then realize this flame trap. Make sure I don't die here. But if I was sprinting through here to there, uh, this would activate. Shoot that. Go, th go up, watch out for the piston, which will create some pressure. Obviously, I know my own traps. This is here, dodge that. Plasma, shoot that. They shoot each other, they actually shot each other. Okay, interesting. We could try and even push this further down to make sure it hits the ground. And now it should be a lot better, but still that's not even the best. We could even make that even better. Do I have the modify on? I don't even have the modify on. Now that should hit, that should be perfect. That gets blocked from this piston. Could even have a second piston to cover up even further. I might put blockade in one of these, just so then it's 100% guaranteed blocked for majority of the time. And we could even make another compartment where flame guards come out from. Or we have a second set of flame traps, which conceals them. It looks like nothing but that one trap, because you're going around this corner, so you don't see anything from this side, which means there's only one trap that will activate. But instead, there'll be other guards here to meet them on the cross um, crossing point. Have a claw trap here, with a potential trap there as well. Maybe that's the case, I'll go for that. Let's go for that, another flame trap. Flame's just too good, especially with the flame walkers, I wanna try to use them. Possibly napalm. So it starts off something easy, like, oh look, it's nothing, and then maybe one trap activates, and they start panicking, running down, another trap activates, and they keep going through it, and combinations of concealment from these pistons here, which would be quite good. I could put another trap here, so it stops play from pushing. And if they retreat, they get caught by a spy trap. Actually, I might even leave this empty, so people think it's safe, and then they jump, and they go back down and die. Then pistons, pistons, uh, flame trap to activate, which will hit plays as well. 
Then we have our, hopefully our other enemy types will start pushing at the same time. And then we have Claw Trap brings us up, kill us. If not, that will kill us. This will be torched by that Flame Trap. If we go up here, Flame Trap will activate as well. Followed up by these minions rushing in through the flames during that time as well. And then hopefully being concealed. We could try to take away Armored Guy, put Blood Blast, or put something else close by. So they can be just sitting here, waiting to jump and pounce on the target during the flame activation. And this will be blocked until activated. So Hull Cube acts as a normal block around guards, preventing them from passing through. So I can path the guard through this. But it would only activate once player gets close enough to this cube. Putting an enforcer there, they could possibly help out. You continue, it looks like it's nothing crazy, like why the hell this is here? And you may see something. So we could play the transparency and actually block this. So it's harvesting something you can't see as you're going past. And then you're like, okay, that's a weird trap there. Why is it there? To have transparency and hard and skin at the same time. Then you have here, destroying this trap. This trap activates, that pulls you up. And potentially gets stuck in this combination here, which I would love. Kind of back spawn here. Let's place this guy over here. But the range of this character is kind of interesting. Because I feel like it should be able to proc this. Might actually create a blocking point. So it looks like it stops with the high ceilings. But then it returns over here. The Dene trap. And what I want to do is play with range as much as possible. Range is important to me. It gives me my outputs. Things will activate before they can actually stop them. With the range shot. And that is the most important part. So we'll put a bit of range game here. Even if it doesn't look like there's anything else going to occur from that. It's still good enough. Maybe there. That would be crazy. Wait, wait a minute. This could be insane if it actually lands. Let's see. Okay. That could work. Maybe a little bit closer to this point here. So it actually still procs. And we'll place Hunter on this. Hunter it will give the benefit of homing down towards targets. And that will be perfect right there. That is great. And another gun right over here. And we'll give that optical implant so it actually activates from that range and still hits targets. I'll give it armor as well so enemies have to waste ammo. And we may even put a spike trap there so they zip line towards him to kill him. That spike trap will activate, hopefully, and annoy them. And give us a little cheeky kill. Actually, maybe block this off so it stops their sight line as they enter. And create a corridor to force the player to actually move in a direction which catches them off guard. Here, a long bolt trap will work quite drastically. I'm gonna place two of them. The goal will be for the player to move forward. And dedicate themselves to pretty much dying. We'll just leave an empty cube here, thinking that's the pathway, but it's not. I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> and now we can put traps over here as well. And potentially flamer. Can I go the whole room? It goes quite a bit. And cannon back, because there's no traps on that side that will activate. So cannon back is quite good here. I'm on obstacle again. Try to think of how to do this. If I put a bolty here, it could activate and still hit them. He'll place a bolty here as well, which will have hunter. And hopefully go through to that side of the map. Perfect. And that's now covered. It's all about the little mechanics all at once. So you don't really see them as you're going through. You're like, wait, this is a weird open area. And then it starts to make sense. Maybe put this here. And then block it off. <laughs> this is so troll-like. So you block it off. So they don't see it, hopefully. And then it activates as they're going past. I actually think that's pretty cool. We're going to block this off now. Because I don't want them to see it in any aspect. Okay, we've got to think about how we're going to use our resources now. Because we have too many choke points. <laughs> The problem with having too much fun with this game. Then from here, we got this, into that, into that. Like it quite a bit. We could play with a flooring here, which forces players to actually go to one side. And it becomes a hologram. Into an acid trap. Potentially. Back into the hologram itself. Place it there. And that will drag an enemy, hopefully, into that trap. Which will be a claw trap as well. With catch and release, into there. So they get pulled, and it gets released into that trap. Even though they've already cleared it. They'll get hit by it. I'll put overshot on this. So when someone rushes it, they hopefully get caught. Now it's not obvious. You don't really see it. Perfect. I could put another guard here, which could be a, just a range guard. I just want to confuse them as much as possible. So they have no clue what's actually going to occur. Unless they really know. I'm going to have this looking this way. So it activates when people push those guards. Let's place some spy traps there as well. And one of them will have a surge. To know the hell out of them. Because they hit the wrong one. And usually I feel like enemies will hit the left one before hitting the right. Because they read the situation from left to right. So I'm guessing that will be the case. I'm kind of liking the starting segment. Which this would become like a walk in the park. And then when they come back down, everything starts activating. I actually think that would be kind of cool. It's like, oh look, you get a, bit, a brief moment to breathe. And then everything goes kind of batshit crazy. It will still activate like this as well. Spy trap here. Which encourages them to push forward into it. Which would be hilarious. I think I want to toy with them as well. With the, the sense of environment. By just making areas like this that go up. And then lead to nothing. To condition them. So you think there's nothing there, then they get hit by the detonators after the second wave. I'm hoping that catch just plays out too. Over here though, we can try to change it up, which I think cannon back would be amazing here. Just sitting here, just chilling. To make this stop moving, you usually have a 
short leash input over here. And that'll be good enough. It'll just stand still and won't even move at all. And then from there, you could put optical implant, and that will give you that increased chance of getting some kills from this downward slope as well. You could also put another one over here too, which is then stuck, guaranteed, and it can't move at all. So we could put a piston there, piston here as well, maybe from downwards so they don't see it as much. And then a flame trap. I might put a spy trap over here though, so it just gets them. And create a drop down location, so they just jump into it. They loot, if they don't get it, they get killed by the trap. Which is a benefit for me, because they have to reset their whole mission again. Unless I just keep a warmonger just sitting there. So as soon as they pick it up, they get hit by the warmonger. I think that's kind of cool too. Let's do that. And if they're going for the gem instantly, they get hit by that. That trap activates, destroy that. Watch out for the nade. Going through. Now surge is activated. Dodge the surge. Keep pushing up. Flame trap kills Harvey, which we wanted. Nice. Harvey's gone. I die, but it's alright because the flame's lingered. Then destroy the flame trap. Nice work, push up further and further. Pistons are already been destroyed. So shot one. Then over here. Now flame trap activates. I die. That is torching effect here. I'm gonna wait for it to actually burn out. Then push in. That guy died, so maybe that's not a good position for him. This is alright. Maybe. I don't know, maybe we can reduce that. Then from here, things activate. Flame trap activates, nice. The guards are still chilling. But we'll try to control them into this flame. I see they don't really die to it. So we need to work on their pathing from that position there. So maybe Bloodlust would be good there. So that guy automatically dies, even if he has nothing on him. Like he has no armor plating anymore. He just ends up being a bare minion. That will cause this to activate uh, with Bloodlust. Which will go through the flame traps. We've got the cannon back over there. Hits us. Sadly, I wanted to activate from here. So maybe it needs optical implants. From here, jump up. Bolts pulled, killed by another bolt. Other bolts over there, destroying this. That gets shot by that player. I can get pulled over here. If I also get pulled, destroy that. Get hit by that and die. You know what? I'm actually liking this base. It's making sense. This doesn't make sense though. Oh, unless we give a chaos and make it bounce even further so that it can actually go into this area here to catch a player off. Then over here, we can see this quite easily. So maybe we can change that a bit. They go through here, the bolt's been used already. Flame trap. Okay, cool. Going through. Hold cube. Hmm. You know what? I kind of like this. There's some resting spaces for the enemies to enjoy. You don't rush through and just activate everything with uh, res pod. AKA Phoenix pod. Nice. We got to fix this area. And make sure to do so. Close that off. Spy trap. Down up here. Bypass. Watch out for this angle. That didn't really activate the way it wants it to. Gem mat. Pick it up. Guards right here. Oh crap. And you get hit. You may have to get an increased attack speed modified too. The other guards. Two other, two other guards. Okay, we're going to work on the guard plays. Make sure they actually aren't accurate. With their playstyle. Yeah, I kind of like the cheekiness behind this. I actually really like it. Okay, so we got the aspect there of what I want to do with my base. It's creating different sightlines, perspectives that usually are quite warped when you enter a base that you may not see if you didn't know where the location was after dying once or twice. So I think that's quite good here. Place it there. Control it. Give that sightline there. I hope that's enough for it to be still activate and get some headshots in that location. But I do like Canabax. I think they're quite... Powerful. If you do something like this, that's crazy. That could work out really, really well. And place a bolt trap over here, which means I can use that new advantage for that area. But we need to actually sacrifice something. Get rid of this guy. Put that there. Actually, we don't need overshot. I feel like a player would activate it. If they walk backwards, already walked out. If they're going to go into it, they will get hit by the trap. Second wave. I'm going to test it one more time. Traps will activate as we go through. Obviously, I can destroy them. I don't know where they are. And then, as you're going through this, other things will activate. And you realize little Harvey's gone. Going through. Destroy this. Destroy that. This thing gets a bit crazy too. You gotta think about it. Because you still have to get your shots. So you'll be low on ammo. To a certain degree. That was... Hmm. Interesting. Everything got destroyed by that. That isn't activating from this range here. At this point it does. But at this point, isn't it too late? I feel like it's too late. Yeah, it's 100% too late. Destroy the other traps above. 
<laughs> Self grief. And then from here, those traps activate. Really nice. Dodge that. Grenades. If I go up to destroy it, I get pulled by the other trap combination. This guy came down, so we need to give him an actual point to stay still and not move. Even that got me still. Okay, I'm, I'm liking it. I'm liking it quite a bit. At this point here, I might actually remove that. Things stuffing up the traps. We go through here. And that does activate. Which means I have to keep moving. Kill by a spike trap. Continue. Other traps. Piston gets me. Add ammo now. Get my ammo. Going through. I actually like that. That's very good. So if you go into one angle and that activates early or not, and you're going back into this, you're going to get hit by something. And usually when try to deflect this instead of deflecting that. But if you enter your deflect and walk away into this, you're in a weird situation. Unless you've timed it correctly. And this guy over here, chilling. Little cheeky one. Nice. It's just to annoy them more than anything, so I might even reduce that. Then we put second wave and masquerade at the same time. That's a bit annoying as hell. They're pushing through here. Let them chill up here. And one will go th furthermore if it does activate. Up to the implant is actually useless for these guys. I'm going to take it off. I think it's enough distance for them to actually just activate naturally. Now, this situation is a bit weird. I think I need to actually leave this open to make them force to go for this. And they'll look at this and be like, what the hell? Why is that there? They won't really look up. And if they do, they only see a spike trap. They won't see anything else until they go like this and look backwards. Now, the bolt trap hitting these guys. Is not what I really intended. Both flame walker as well, because I want to see it in action. Here. Perfect. Flame walking is more of a gimmick, but I actually think it's kind of cool, so I'm gonna use it in the base no matter what. As the base will have a series of choke points, which plays with unique angles, elevated surface, twists and turns, and decepting the raiders as we go through it. That's the goal. And that will make the raiders feel certain ways in certain situations where they can maybe get a chance to breathe, and other times when they're pretty much overwhelmed by the pressure from different angles and they have to try and figure out what the hell is going on. Alongside that, actually create a base that's deadly, but still not a kill box, because kill box meta was a thing. Builders are still trying to replicate kill boxes to a certain degree, and others are trying to not verse kill boxes, because it does tilt plays off. So now we have this combination of traps and designs put together in order to create this interesting design that many players don't have in this game, or have ever made in this game. I'm glad to see that we've created something that's maybe very unique for player experiences, and especially encountering something like this. So let's go down here, and let's go into this trap. I'm gonna try to push through this, see if that's even possible. And see, speed running not an option, because of blockade. Those traps are already activated. Obviously, I'll be respawning if I died here, in a normal game. Push it up, destroy this, get pulled, block that. <laughs> they shot each other. The flame walkers don't really work the way I wanted to because I'm killing them too early. Maybe that flame trap should be over there, which would make 100% sense. That is killing that, so we gotta fix that too. Maybe I just get rid of this knock completely, and just put it over there, which I prefer as well. That's bouncing off that corrosive cube. It is activating though, which is the cool part. It's just that corrosive cube's in the way. So let's kill this. Nice. We need to actually put this higher. Which is an insane thing to think about, but I think that may be good being higher. So let's fix some stuff here. Now it goes from this way here. It covers it up, and we've got another angle there too. Even though I think flame walkers cost a lot, I'm still willing to test it out. Well, another one will just be sitting in the flames to tank a hit or two. It will actually become a defense for the uh, flame trap. So instead of having one HP, it has now three. And if they keep hitting the warmonger instead of actually hitting the trap itself, I think that's pretty cool. That's maybe an untold gimmick that many people don't know of. But that could be really good for us right now to create some crazy plays and opportunity. If this doesn't work, I'm going to be so annoyed. Destroy <laughs> sure this. Flame walkers. Other flame walker is concealed. For sure, traps already active. Will this activate? Let's see. Ah, that works. No, it still doesn't work. I just got to move that barricade. That staircase thing is actually going to ruin us. Nice. Where's the other guy? Oh, he's just chilling in the wrong angle. Okay, we got to fix his angle too. That should work perfectly. That's the goal. I'm trying to keep them hidden through the flames. At least you have like multiple levels of flames activating at the same time as they pass through from behind. This guy's shooting shots and it's still not working the way I want it to. 
Because this level here needs to be higher. Will this work though? Will that actually catch someone? I think it could. I actually think it could. It's not too expensive too. It's just this pulling aspect. I put more points into it to get the guaranteed grab as someone's trying to zip line. Because if it catches them during a zip line, that'll be insane. This not activating bloodlust is a bit got me a bit worried. You know why? It's because that doesn't get enraged. It needs to be over here, standing in this position. Because it needs to detect me in order to become bloodlust activatable. There it works, but committing to a zip line, it doesn't work. Which means we need to put something behind him so players don't commit straight away. But this is now closer to a certain degree. It's just not the the same angle I want. I may have to do this. It'll activate, and since you're here. And you still got clearly a sight line, it still pulls you. And maybe we take away the cannon back here. Because either way, they're going to push through it. She'll save us some points. And instead, place. That looks great. And it does activate from that distance, but I might give it overthrow as well. Which means it touches the very bottom of that platform. Maybe I should have a standing guard that actually just stands there and doesn't even move. But then they have to still be flame walker and still have armor. Now this has to stay here. So then we're going to remove this. And it just protects it. You know what? That's kind of god here. Might just put a spy trap. So they jump in, they just die. If they fall into it. Then we should have another guy that just walks in. That just stands there in the, the flames, waiting. Could you leave it like this? So when the flames activate, they have to person. And maybe now we have a spare warmonger just outside. Because one will activate, which will activate the rest of the aspects. And this will only have bloodlust. Nothing else. It doesn't need anything else. Just little things that you wouldn't expect, but in conjunction together, could catch you really off guard and just end up with me having easy kills and farming your XP and currency. Push up. This activates. I one shot of that. That's crazy. So I'm playing could be trash. I saw those flames there. Maybe that's complete. Which gives him enough time to actually run through. Oh, the guy from behind got me. Nice. Good bloodlust. Now it makes you think that it's going to be pushing you, but it doesn't push you. So you're constantly staggered here. Oh my god, this is crazy. So now we're trying to destroy the flame trap. The one there. Get pulled. Block that. Deflect that shot and dodge that shot. Destroy this. Now I have one shot remaining. I'm gonna try and collect my shots. Get by those traps. Perfect. It's tanking it. That's crazy. That's absolutely nuts. I like that. I need to close this compartment off. Perfect shots. Nice. Optimal. Glad to see it. Now I'm gonna try to rush that location. Destroy this. Oh my god, it works. Panic and die. Perfect. You can still shoot it midway or cut it out. You've got options. Push up here. That timing is impeccable by me, by the way. To get all those blocks. That'd be kind of nuts with that stuff. This trap set up here, I might actually deplete. Gives back my resource. Block. Push up further. That activates that grenade. I have no protection here, so I'm pretty much dead. Nice. Keep going through. Destroy this trap because you see that first. We'll hear that first. And that activates like what the hell's going on. Kill this. That blew up, which means that doesn't work. We'll fix that up. You keep in mind the RNG to everything. It's very important. So we're gonna fix this. And this didn't really pull me. Unless you're speed running it and then drops you into there. Panic. Destroy that. Can't stay here. Push through here. Destroy that. Flame Walker. Oh, that's bad. Okay. That's very bad. We gotta fix that. Does work the way I want it. That did though. That was dirty. I feel like it's unnecessary. I just give them armor plating and make them wait until Masquerade activates, which is close around here. I may actually take away this trap. So I can imagine someone trying to fight it and then just die randomly. Or we may redirect this to a high point. So it doesn't break as well. Like this. That, I think that's quite nice. So starting from the start. Continue to this section here. How is there, but it's going to die either way. So I'm just going to kill myself. As people try to speed run through it, they're going to regret it. As you see, they're going to regret that. Destroy that. Perfect. Push up. Realize there's other warmongers. Try to destroy them, but they got those benefits on. Three hits. I hit both um, armor platings. The leg and the top, and then actually killed it. They're from here. You're trying to figure out what to do, but then... Yeah, this issue here, so for Raider, this is just being annoying. And then, get killed from behind by Bloodlust. So that's annoying as hell. Another easy death. So you have to watch out and then try to clear that after on the next spawn. Destroy this. Because you the traps activate and you don't want to get killed. you got to wait it out further and further. 
and try and destroy the trap. Got the lucky hit. If you don't get that lucky hit, it's just bad. But running out of ammo, as you can see. Did the Warmonger jump down as well? I'm wondering. Destroy that. Now I'm out of bullets. Pick up my ammo. Nice. Wall nearly got died from that trap. Didn't realize. Warmonger is dead, but then I'm also about to die. And there you go, I'm dead. Dead again. Try to collect my ammo. I can close this off again. That's why I forgot to close. Then just try to destroy it. Got the body shot. Then jump up here. Get pulled. Catch release into the trap. Then I'm gonna jump over it since I know. If I didn't know, I'll die like that. Push up further. And then you got this weird choke point here. Like, oh crap. And everything just hits you. Everything. So if you're playing with a cold partner, you most likely both die. As your second partner tries to go for the revive without realizing the traps are activating. Then that trap there. That's an easy one, I believe. There's a weird combination here. Like, what the hell's going on? I activate my thing too early. And I die to the trap behind me. Yep, that's a little bit sneaky one. Pushing up. That's already been activated because of my a pull. And now I'm stuck. Because that's activated. Did that napalm actually land, though? That napalm didn't land. Destroying stuff as I go. Getting killed by multiple things. Gets pulled. Still safe. Interesting gimmick. Because if you're not paying attention to your positioning, you get caught. Push up further and further. Clearing traps when I can to get more XP. And pass myself. Another important currency in the game. Destroy that. Nearly dies this flame trap. That activates. I gotta go move now. Destroy this. Block. See this guy. Kill him. And now I can go out. Or follow that way there and die. To that singular trap at the very bottom of the base. For the skull uh, actual loot. That trap activates as well. That gets me as I'm looking up. That burns me. Then I push it up. Destroys the trap. Get my ammo back. This activates. We now have to waste my ammo to kill these. Get killed by this trap over there. Then as I'm panicking for ammo, collect my ammo again. Go over there, dodge those. But if I was pushing up quickly, I'll get hit. Gotta go backwards here so I don't get killed. Pick up my ammo, nice. Going through. Seems kind of chill. That can still pull me since it's not destroyed. Trap. Other trap, deflect. Going down. Not too bad, that should at least give you <laughs> maybe five to 10 kills easily from every raid. And if they're cold raided, they're gonna panic. In the sheer amount of like stress that comes out through all these trap setups and these choke points. I think I'm happy with the base. I think it will perform very, very well. And it will catch people off guard with these new techniques that many people don't even think about. Especially with the combination with hide and skin and this setup here alongside that. In conjunction with this setup and tanking the shots for the flame trap. Which will work against new players for sure. And they won't understand why that isn't pushing them and actually attacking them. My final thoughts on my base is there's a couple of amendments I want to actually complete. It'll be something I'll go through a series of changes throughout my game and as I pretty much progress in my base to make it stronger and better through each iteration. And from that, I become a better builder, but also my base becomes even more deadlier as those amendments will carry the base into a position where I am able to get as many kills as I can against those raiders through crazy psychological warfare, essentially, by having traps in every position that you think of, but not a kill box, not a standard kill box in any aspect. It's pretty much being dislocated and then placed into different areas, and then it just makes this masterful piece, and I really do like it. But mate, some of your pins of thoughts in the comment section down below about our base and also our advanced guide. Do you like it? Do you want to see more of this? Tell me in the comment section down below. And if you have any additional tips, tell us in the comment section down below. Any builders out there with the best tips in the world, talk in the comment section down below. Spread the news about what building tips is best and how they work, situations, combinations, whatever it may be. I would love to hear it in the comment section down below. And as always, mates, it's a pleasure to have you guys on the channel as we go through this, and I'll catch you, mates, next time. Bye-bye.